by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المسلمين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا نور الله ما شاء الله viewers of Madani channel welcome to arise and shine and before we introduce the topic of the day and it's going to be very interesting inshallah and I hope that we learn from something from it insha'Allah. So we're going to give you a blessing of reciting the Rudha Park upon the Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa The Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa has said that beautify your gatherings by reciting salat upon me because the salat that you recite upon me will be nur for you on the day of judgment. What a beautiful way to wake up in the morning if only every day that we wake up and as soon as we open our eyes we recite the Rudha Park upon the Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa with regards to the topic, I'm going to quickly, quickly introduce the topic before we go to the Talawat so that hopefully you'll stay tuned with us. Today is the day that we remember that personality, that individual that was the consoler of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That individual that stood by the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whatever thick and thin, whatever problems he faced. That individual that sacrificed all her wealth in the way of Islam as well. That individual that was the mother of all of the believers. That individual that was the mother to the sons and the daughters of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And that individual that was the grandmother of the great Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. None other, we obviously, you all know who we're talking about now. We're talking about Sayyidina Khatija al-Qubra radiallahu ta'ala. So please stay tuned to us and inshallah we'll learn something today. So before we carry on, let's listen to the Talawat of the day. Salu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Main Allah ta'ala ki panah mein aata hoon. Shaytan al-mardood se. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allah ke naam se shuru. Jo nihayat meherban rahim wala. Ya ayyuhan. سُتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدَةٍ وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً اے لوگو اپنے رب سے ڈرو جس نے تمہیں ایک جان سے پیدا کیا اور اسی میں سے اس کا جوڑا بنایا اور ان دونوں سے بہت سے مرد و عورت پھیلا دیئے وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَابِ اِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا اور اللہ سے ڈرو جس کے نام پر مانگتے ہو اور رشتوں کا لحاظ رکھو بے شک اللہ ہر وقت تمہیں دیکھ رہا ہے وَآتُ الْيَتَامَا أَمْوَالَهُمْ وَلَا تَتَبَدَّلُ الْخُبِيثَ بِالطَّيِّبِ اور یتیموں کو ان کے مال دو اور سترے کے بدلے گندہ نہ لو وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَهُمْ إِلَى أَمْوَالِكُمْ اور ان کے مال اپنے مالوں میں ملا کر نہ کھا جاؤ اِنَّهُ كَانَ حُوبًا بے شک یہ بڑا گناہ ہے وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تُقْسِطُوا فِي الْيَتَامَا فَانْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَا وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَاعِ اور اگر تمہیں اندیشہ ہو کہ یتیم لڑکیوں میں انصاف نہ کرو گے تو نکاح میں لاؤ جو عورتیں تمہیں خوش آئیں دو دو اور تین تین اور چار چار فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا فَوَاحِدَةً أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ پھر اگر ڈرو کہ دو بی بیوں کو برابر نہ رکھ سکو گے تو ایک ہی کرو یا کنیزیں جن کے تم مالک ہو ذَلِكَ أَدْنَا أَلَّا تَعُولُوا یہ اس سے زیادہ قریب ہے 
کہ تم سے ظلم نہ ہو اور عورتوں کو ان کے مہر خوشی سے دو پھر اگر وہ اپنے دل کی خوشی سے مہر میں سے تمہیں کچھ دے دیں تو اسے کھاؤ رچتا پچتا یعنی خوشگوار اور مزے سے اور بے عقلوں کو ان کے مال نہ دو جو تمہارے پاس ہیں جن کو اللہ نے تمہاری بسر اوقات کیا ہے اور انہیں اس میں سے کھلاؤ اور پہناؤ اور ان سے اچھی بات کہو اور یتیموں کو آزماتے رہو یہاں تک کہ جب وہ نکاح کے قابل ہوں تو اگر تم ان کی سمجھ ٹھیک دیکھو تو ان کے مال انہیں سپرد کر دو اور انہیں نہ کھاؤ حد سے بڑھ کر اور اس جلدی میں کہ کہیں بڑے نہ ہو جائیں اور جسے حاجت نہ ہو وہ بچتا رہے اور جو حاجت مند ہو وہ بقدر مناسب کھائے پھر جب تم ان کے مال انہیں سپرد کرو تو ان پر گواہ کر لو اور اللہ کافی ہے حساب لینے کو صدق اللہ العظیم صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ویورز امدین چینل یو وچنگ رائز اینڈ شائن اینڈ ٹوڈے وی گن ٹاک اباؤٹ دی گریٹ سٹیٹس اف نان اوف دی دین سیدنا ختیجۃ القبرا رضی اللہ تعالی اینڈ بیفور وی گو ٹو دی کلام آئی وانٹڈ ٹو بیسیکلی جسٹ انٹروڈیوس a little bit about this particular topic. Before the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa announced the prophethood and made aware that he, to the people that he was the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he was known as a very trustworthy and as a very honest person as well. And this was the character that was well known by everybody of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And he earned a livelihood by going with people and earning a livelihood by traveling on these caravans. And he was also a trader as well. And Sayyidina Khadija Al-Kabra radiallahu anhu, she was also a trader. She used to trade goods and used to give them to these traders to sell on her behalf. And she had heard how that trustworthy that this person was. And she made an intention that she wanted hit this particular individual, i.e. the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa to take her goods for him and take them and sell them. And she sent a message to him that, you know, if you were to take my goods on a caravan and if you were to trade my goods, then I would pay you double what I would pay anybody else. And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa agreed to this. And what Sayyidina Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu anhu, she sent her servant with them, a, a person called Mesra, and said, go with the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa observe him, but don't say anything to him. Whatever deal he does, agree with it. And don't go against whatever he says. And so uh, Mesra went with the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And when they came back from this particular caravan, The profit that they'd made has been double more than ever before. And Mesra saw the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he was always honest. And that also when the intense heat came, the angels came down and protected the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa shaded the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa from the heat. And the love of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa entered the heart of this particular person called Mesra. And when Sayyidina Khatija al-Kabra radiallahu alayhi heard about this, she was obviously happy. And she sent a message to him that, you know, what I was willing to pay you before, I'm going to pay you twice that. Why? Because you were such an honest trader and you generated so much profit for me. And there's many, many motherly pearls that we can get from this story. But before we talk about the motherly pearls that we can get from this particular parable, inshallah, we're going to listen to the Nath of the Day. So let's listen to the Nath of the Day. 
Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
बात से इतनी है अपनी الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ماشاء اللہ ماشاء اللہ ویورز امد ان شانل یو اچنگ ارائز ان شانل بیفو وی ہرد دا کلام وی ور ٹاکنگ ابت دا گریٹ پرسنالٹی سیدنا ختیجت القبرہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ دا ام وی ہرد ابت دا انسیڈنٹ ان وچ شی سنٹ ا میسیج تو دا پروفت اف اللہ صلی اللہ تعالیٰ سن تو جائن ہر ان بزنس ان دو دا ٹریڈنگ فور ہر ان از ریزولٹ ا Uh, with his honesty uh, of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and honesty is an attribute that unfortunately we see and I'm just going to talk a little bit about honesty of yours and within channel because it is a great attribute to have and the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a perfect example of that and unfortunately nowadays we see that we're losing that virtue within ourselves that that quality within ourselves and the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said once that a true believer can have every habit he can have every form of habit but he cannot be a liar and he cannot be dishonest. So this is an attribute that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that a true believer cannot have. It is impossible that you are a believer and you are dishonest, you are a believer and you lie. And in another hadith, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, there are three signs of a hypocrite. When he talks, he lies. When he promises, he breaks it. And when he's entrusted with something, he betrays. So these qualities of being honest, these qualities of being truthful, these qualities that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a perfect example of. Today, unfortunately, we're not seeing this. Today, when you ask yourself, when a person sees a Muslim, what does he think? Does he think he's honest? Does he think he is dishonest? There was an incident once, and I've narrated it before, but I'll narrate it again. With somebody I know here in the UK, he was driving a black cab, and for people that are abroad, what is a black cab? You probably see them, that in London, it's uh, something that's quite popular. There's a taxi there, and passengers sit at the back, the driver sits at the front, and there's like five or six seats that they can sit at the back. And this taxi driver, what he did is, he picked up the passengers, there were four passengers, two male, two female, and he reset the meter. And after he reset the meter, he started the journey, and after a certain distance, they stopped the taxi, and two passengers got out. And when these two passengers walk, gets out, they have to walk around to the front of the taxi at the side door and ask the driver how much. 
The driver looked at the meter and he said that the meter says six pounds, so you owe six pound. Fair enough. They paid the six pound. Now remember, there's still two passengers in the back of the car. There's still two passengers in the back of the car. And what the taxi driver didn't do is he didn't reset the meter because that six, the, the journey so far has already been paid for. So anyway, they go on the journey. And when the journey ends, they get out, the two, the two passengers get out, come round the front, ask the taxi driver, how much do you owe? The taxi driver looks at the meter and says to them, look, the meter says £12. Your friends have paid £6. You owe £6. Now, before I go on, I just want to picture the scene a little bit for you. This taxi driver he had a small beard. He had a, a topi on his head. And he had the thisbi hanging around the, around the mirror like a lot of people do. These non-Muslims are looking at this taxi driver and looking at what he just said, said to him, you're not a Muslim, are you? And he said, yeah, yeah, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Muslim. And they said, no, 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 you're not a Muslim. And this taxi driver said to me that when they said it to me two or three times that you're not a Muslim, I got a little bit angry. And I said, what? why are you saying I'm not? I'm a Muslim. Tell me why are you saying I'm not a Muslim? Listen to what they said. They said to him, if you were a Muslim, you would have charged a 12 pound. Meaning that, you know, Muslims, that are, in their mind, Muslims are dishonest people. Muslims are people that will try every trick in the book to try and make that extra money. And why did he not utilize the opportunity now to charge us 12 pound? Because the meter said 12 pound. He could have done that, but he didn't. Why? He can't be a Muslim. But this taxi driver was an honest person. This taxi driver said to him, no, this is what you earn. But it's sad. You know, from this story, we realize how sad it is that this is what people think about us. That we are dishonest people. We are people that will, you know, use all these opportunities. And is there not some truth in that? Is there not some truth in that, that there are a lot of Muslims out there that are dishonest? There are a lot of Muslims out there that are lying now. Isn't this a sad state of our affairs? And from the perfect example, the, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we look at his life. He taught us. And in this particular hadith, you said that a Muslim can have any habit. He can have all sorts of habits. But a Muslim, a true believer, will never have the habit of lying or being dishonest. And isn't it sad that that's the state that we've got to? Viewers of Muslim channel, please, you know, each and every one of us, and I'm saying this again now to, to those Muslims, especially those Muslims that are living in a country where you are in a minority. And the reason why I'm speaking to you is because you, each and every one of you, represents Islam. If you're in a country where 100% of the people are Muslims, then if amongst them Muslims there are dishonest people or honest people or liars or whatever, then that doesn't, that doesn't put a label on Islam. But in these countries where you're a minority, if you do something wrong, you're effectively labeling Islam, oh, Muslims are liars, oh, Muslims are dishonest. How many times in, in my life that I've, I've worked in offices in different places, you know, I'm, I'm a, a software consultant that I've worked in many, many different offices. And when you're in many, many offices and they have these parties and they have these gatherings and there used to be uh, a culture here in the UK, and sh uh, thankfully it's finished now, where every Friday they used to go to the pub and they used to drink alcohol. And obviously they would invite me and I would say, look, sorry, I don't go, I, I don't drink alcohol. Yeah, I'm not going to go to these gatherings. And they would rattle off names, oh, well, this Muslim does it, this Muslim does it, this Muslim does it. Why don't you do it? Each and every one of you, each and every one of you represents Islam. You have it on your forehead, I'm a Muslim. You can't see it, but they can see it. And whatever you do that is wrong, it labels Islam. So please, you know, in, in these countries, more than ever, I mean, we should, really should everywhere, but in these countries, more than ever, we should be more, we are ambassadors of Islam, and we should represent Islam in its true form. Views of Muslim channel, today we're talking about Sayyidina Khadija Dhul-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha. And we have many, many virtues that we need to discuss. But also we have many, many packages as well. We have the reminder of the day, inshallah. So we're going to go to the reminder of the day, inshallah. But stay tuned, inshallah. And we'll come back and give you more virtues of this great personality of Islam. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah. By the grace of Allah. Ali Islam brothers and viewers of Madani channel, welcome back to our daily reminder. Alhamdulillah, Azawajal, this is such an important reminder, and every reminder is an important reminder. But today, Alhamdulillah, Azawajal, I bought you a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Salam is a very important part of our beautiful religion. Salam is where you are giving dua to the other person. 
and alhamdulillah azza wa jal salam where does it originate from where did it start from sayyiduna adam alayhi salatu was salam he was ordered by allah azza wa jal that oh adam go and give salam greet and oh, go and go and see the, the group of angels that are in paradise give them salam whatever reply they give you will be the greeting of your children yani for the nation so adam alayhi salatu was salam went and he said assalamu alaykum and the angels replied with wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and that was then made as a formal greeting for the humans and alhamdulillah azza wa jal we are lucky that today this is the greeting of islam this is the greeting for the muslims whenever we meet with one another we all say assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh but what what do you say what do you mean by saying assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh the scholars they say that this is a dua that you are giving to that person you're giving the dua of happiness of salamti that you are free for you know you are free to worry about that i'm going to do any harm to you because i've just given you salamti i've given you salam alhamdulillah azza wa jal is a very important part of our life that whenever we meet with someone we always greet them according to the islamic greeting which amir ahl sunnah has mentioned many times and is even taught us practically on madani channel assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and then you the other person who listens should reply with wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh meaning that if someone gives you salam say something better to them a better reply for that and alhamdulillah azza wa jalla there is no better reply than giving salam to another person today you see a lot of people sadly you know we can see that they are away from the deen from the teachings of islam they might greet with one another hello hi these don't mean anything but when you are giving salam just imagine how many duas how many blessings that you are giving to that person and if you're the first one yes if you're the first one to greet someone the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wasallam said that allah azza wa jalla writes 90 blessings for you and when you when someone replies he gets the 10 blessings so alhamdulillah azza wa jalla what's better to wait for someone to give you salam or to give them salam first obviously a rightly minded person will always give salam first because he needs them good deeds we all need the good deeds that we can gather in this world while we're still alive because when we're dead when we leave this world you won't be able to do anything yourself so alhamdulillah azza wa jalla my islam brothers and viewers of madani channel make it a habit to give salam either you know someone you don't know anyone even if that person is younger than you don't be having that thought that he is younger than me he should be the one giving salam to me no as a muslim our prophet sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam's sunnat is he will always give salam sheikh abdul haq muhaddis delvi rahmatullah ta'ala li he writes in his book that even now when you go to the blessed mazar the rozai park of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam before you enter the secret chamber you go near the golden grills always think and it is a guarantee that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will give you salam first so alhamdulillah so just let's try to revive this sunnah whenever you're picking the phone up whenever you go into a room whenever you go home whenever you meet someone outside at work in colleges in universities at home at work wherever we are we're going to try to revive this sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and inshallah so just you've heard what the reward is now the seriousness of giving salam if you don't give salam someone gives you salam and you don't reply back to them the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam he says it is wajib it is necessary for someone if, if you have heard his salam then you must give an answer back to him it is wajib if you don't then you will be held responsible you will be a sinner and you have to do tauba and then you know the sin will be forgiven but alhamdulillah azza wa jal we're not even going to go to that extent alhamdulillah we are muslims we love the muslims whatever good we have inshallah we need to share that and just imagine when we are sharing happiness when we are sharing salam salamti amongst the world this is what islam is about islam is about peace islam is about alhamdulillah happiness islam is about helping one another alhamdulillah we get so many calls every day you'll get so many calls now when you pick up the phone some people have a habit of saying hello hello doesn't mean anything so inshallah next time whenever someone rings you 
السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ میں بھی انشاءاللہ عز و جل اور سلام اور سمائل could bring someone close to the deen. May Allah Azza wa Jal reward us and may Allah Azza wa Jal give me and all of us the ability to take this daily reminder and make it practical inshallah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. By the grace of Allah By the grace of Allah Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Viewers of Madin Channel, you're watching Arise and Shine. Today we're talking about the great personality Sayyidina Khatijat al-Kubra radiyallahu ta'ala. She was the mother of the believers, she was the wife of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala wa and she was the comforter of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala wa She stood by him no matter what difficulty that they faced. With regards to the nikah of uh, Sayyidina Khatijat al-Kubra radiyallahu ta'ala with the Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala wa it's stated that Two months and 25 days after the journey that took place with the Prophet of Allah وسلم, came back when he traded and she was so impressed with his honesty that the uh, wedding was arranged and at this particular wedding Sayyidina Khadija al-Qabra, one of her uncles was present and from the Prophet of Allah وسلم, side a few of his uncles were also present Sayyidina Hazrat Abu Bakr Sadiq uh, تعالى, was also present and a few people from the time of Mudar were present. And so it was a simple affair that the Naqah took place. It is said that on that day that a camel was sacrificed and all the guests ate from that. And this was the simple ceremony that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had with Sayyiduna Khadija Al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala. And you know when you hear and you read about this it makes you think that today what are our weddings like? What are our weddings like? Are our weddings a simple affair as well? And maybe the guests that arrived on this particular nikah when the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married Sayyidina Khadijah al-Qubra they were a, in few in number maybe 10 maybe 15 maximum number of people that were there maybe 20 I'm not too sure a, a few people were there and nowadays what do we try and do nowadays we try to show up by inviting as many many people as possible now I'm not saying that that is haram that if you want to invite a thousand people or five thousand people or ten thousand people it's not haram but what is haram, viewers of Madhani is the activities that take place there at the Nikah. Today, you know, the Imam Sahib is called. You know, the Imam Sahib is called. He does the khutbah. He performs the Nikah. And as soon as the Nikah is performed, as soon as the dua is finished, he's kind of like pushed out the door, <laughs> yeah, effectively. The music starts place, place. The dancing starts going on. And, you know, the, the bride and the groom are dancing in front of everybody as well. Astaghfirullah. The music is going on in front of everybody else. Barda amongst the guests is completely finished. Music is taking place there. All sorts of sinful activities are taking place there. And you're saying to yourself, you know, this beautiful sunnah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is a beautiful sunnah. And everybody, you know, talks about, oh, I want to get married. Why? Because it's a sunnah. Yes, it's a sunnah. But what about all the other things? That you're talking about sunnah, but what about all the sins that you're accumulating when you perform this nikah? What about all those things that are happening? You know, dancing on the streets, fireworks in the street, and all these other sorts of sins that are taking place. And views of Malik Channel, again, it's a time to reflect that Islam is about simplicity. Islam is about simplicity. When a child is born, the azan is read into the ears of the child. Simple ceremony. And this signifies that the child is born into the fold of Islam. When a person gets married, it's a simple ceremony. That in a simple ceremony that the nikah takes place, the dua takes place, and the nikah is done. When a person passes away, it's a simple ceremony. The namaz janaza, how long does it take? It's not a long affair, it can take hours and hours, a few moments. Within two minutes, the namaz e janaza takes place. The dua after the namaz e janaza, it's not a lengthy dua, namaz e janaza. And this is a simple life. All our life is around simplicity and making it easy for the Muslims. But we try to make it hard for ourselves. Why? Because what will that person say if I don't want to have a big lavish wedding? If I don't book the best hall in the city of London and where 5,000 people can come, then what kind of wedding is this? And what will people say? And so all their lives, you know, and they proudly announce the fact that my, oh, I give my daughter $50 of gold. I give my daughter $100 of gold, $200 of gold. I mean, I heard that, you know, in Pakistan, people have to give flats in dowry. They have to give cars in dowry. They have to give all of these things. You know, this is burdening the family viewers of Madhini Channel, this burdens the people and this, you know, this burden can have an everlasting effect you know, you fed a thousand people but the effect of that can, on the family can stay forever the mother of the believers, Sayyidina Aisha Siddiqa has said that the Prophet of Allah said a blessed nikah 
is one in which there is less burden. Don't you want to have a blessed nakar, a blessed future? Or do you want to have a nakar which puts a burden on the family for the, maybe for five years, ten years? And sometimes you hear that the, the father or the bride, they take out loans from banks, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. And nowadays, you know, people are spending extravagant amounts on the wedding and think nothing of it. Well, it appears they think nothing of it, but the burden that comes onto the family is so much greater. So views of Mother Shalom, we need to reflect on this. What I'm saying to you is I'm not going to say to you that, look, you can spend as much as you wish. If you want to spend a million pounds on a wedding, okay. But what I am saying to you is, is when you perform that wedding, do not commit any sins. And if you're not sure about, look, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to do, this is what I would like to do. If you're not sure whether it's halal or haram, consult a scholar. Consult a scholar and say, look, I want, to, I want to do this activity. I want to have this and I want to have that and I want to have this. And they will guide you. But I think every Muslim will understand that singing and dancing and music and all of these things are haram. And today, you know, the significance of the parda is disappearing. That you may have, even in some places, they'll have the women and the men separated. Okay, but then who's serving the women? Men. <laughs> and again, what is happening here? And then what happens is the women and the men are separated, but that the groom comes and sits amongst the women. He sits with his bride in front of all of the women. Again, you know, what is this? You know, that the rule is the same. So please reflect on this, viewers of Muni Channel. And if we look at the pious predecessors and how they lived their lives, then we will see perfect examples of how. And even if we look today, if we look at Amir al Sunnat, when his, I remember that I had the opportunity many, many, many years ago to go to Multan Sharif at Ishtama. I remember that Ishtama, and I can't remember the year. And uh, at that Multan, inshallah, one day we'll talk about the Ishtama and Multan, inshallah, and we'll talk about this. But I remember that, 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 that uh, Amir al-Sunnat, he did the nakah of his son, and chware, you know, dry dates were distributed amongst the people that day. And that was the nakah, simple ceremony that was done. And I remember that when his other son got married again, a simple ceremony was done, that a few people were gathered, and a simple meal was given. So there is no harm in this. There is no harm in this, but I think it's our nafs, our ego, that says, no, we have to have a big wedding. Inshallah, we're going to continue with the attributes of Sayyidina Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala. But before we continue, we have the hadith of the day, inshallah azza wa jal. So let's listen to the hadith of the day. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu has reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has said, Salasun man kunna fihi wajata halawat al-iman. That whosoever possesses three qualities, three such attributes, will attain the sweetness of iman. He will attain the sweetness of faith. What are those three qualities, dear viewers of Rise and Shine? Firstly, an yakun Allahu wa rasuluhu that Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam become the most beloved to this individual over everything else. That He loves Allah and His Messenger the most in regards to anything else. For this one needs to dedicate and invest his time in learning about the beautiful religion of Islam, safeguarding himself from those things which could possibly earn the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also the more we study about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his character, his life, his dealings, then the more love we will shall cherish in regards to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our hearts. The second thing that the person he loves another person only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that within our hearts we should keep our hearts clean and within our hearts we should not have any hatred or any malice towards anyone else. And the third quality mentioned that he hates leaving the fold of Islam, he hates reverting towards back to disbelief as he hates to be thrown into the fire of hell. This is how much he hates to leave the folds of Islam. This implies on how strongly rooted one ought to be upon his Islamic beliefs and values. Subhanallah, what a beautiful hadith. May Allah Ta'ala allow us to ponder over this hadith and implement 
these three great qualities within our lives so that we too can attain the sweetness of Iman. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Views of Mother Channel, you're watching Rise and Shine. Today we've been talking about so far Sayyidina Khatijat al-Kubra. And she was that person, she was very, very rich. She was a wealthy person. And she could have effectively lived a life of luxury. She could have lived a life of comfort. She could have had a very, very easy life. But because of the love that she had for the Prophet of Allah, that when she accepted Islam, she sacrificed all of that. And in the early days of Islam, when the Prophet of Allah announced prophethood, there were so many people that put thorns in the way of the Prophet of Allah with stones in the way of him and so many difficulties were there so much problems they faced but she stood by the Prophet of Allah and she was the great comforter of the Prophet of Allah and he said that uh, Sayyidina Alama Muhammad bin Isaq Madani ta'ala, said that whenever the Prophet of Allah felt sad after hearing anything unacceptable that was heartbreaking from the unbelievers he would go Sayyidina Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala and Allah would dispel the Prophet's state of grief through her that she would comfort him she would stand by him she would support him and she was a great supporter for him so that whenever any difficulty was faced by the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa she always stood by his side and again there's some beautiful motherly pearls that we need to learn from this as well that the wife stood by the husband in this particular situation and for our sisters that are out there again Standing by your spouse, standing by your partner, not overburdening your partner, not putting demands on your partner. You know, in this particular case, she could have said, well, I'm used to this kind of life. Yeah, I'm used to having this, I'm used to having that. But she realized the difficulties that the Prophet of Allah would face, and she faced them with him. She was the first woman to accept Islam. She is the, given the title of the mother of the believers. This is the great personality. But she could have lived a life of ease effectively, but she sacrificed all that for the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And who was the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? In her case, it was her husband. Supporting her husband, not overburdening her husband, comforting her husband. And sisters that are listening today, do we do this? Do we support our husbands? Do we comfort our husbands? Or do we overburden them? I remember many, many years ago, me and my family, uh, my mother of my child, she said to me that we need to go to somebody's house because they bought a new house and we need to go and congratulate them. So I said, okay, fair enough. So we went there and we took a gift. And when we went there, me and, and uh, the brother were sat in the front room and they were in the back and they were wandering around the house and everything. And we, you know, we had a cup of tea and then we left. And when we left, when we got into the car, I was like, coming home. I said to the mother of my child that, is the sister happy with the new house? And she said, yeah, yeah, she's very happy. She showed me the kitchen, she showed me the garden, she showed me all the house. And I just remained quiet. After a few moments, the mother of my children said to me that, is the brother happy? Or why did you ask? Is the brother not happy? And I said to her that in the front room when I was sat with the brother, the brother was crying. The brother was crying. And I said, he's crying because he cannot afford this house. You know, the, the payments that he has to make on this house, the way that he's going to have to pay off the debts in this house. He said to me that, you know, I'm going to have to be working seven days a week for as long as I can ever think of, and you know, in the next 20 years, 25 years, to be able to pay off this house. And I said to him, that, why did you buy this house then if, you, if you're going to pay this? And he said, look, my wife, she wouldn't accept anything. She, you know, her friends have got a house like this, so she wants a house like this. Her friends have got that house, so she wants that house like this. And, you know, in this particular case, that, that particular brother, he was overburdened by the expectations. If only we can learn to live a simple life. And then he continued to cry. He said to me, brother, it's not stopping here. She now wants a certain car that everybody's having at the moment, these seven-seater cars that everybody's having, she wants that as well. And I've, so many brothers, unfortunately, have come to us, and they're, they're literally in tears. I remember one, one brother we, we tried to do in Fradi Koshish on him, he was a, he was a, I think he was a taxi driver, and we said to him that, brother, come to the masjid, come to the ijtama, come to the masjid, read your namaz with jamaat, come to jamaat, because he, he was never seen in the masjid. And he said to me, brother, I'll tell you what, you pay the payments on my house, and I'll be in the masjid five times a day. I cannot. I mean, that wasn't a justifiable excuse, but he, he was so burdened by the expenses 
that you know if that's what's happened nowadays that we are burdened by these expenses and we need to comfort each other a husband should comfort the wife a wife should comfort the husband and in every aspect in life and so many times we've seen that even in within the environment of Dawah Islami those people that you see that subhanallah on Madri channel that are giving so much time to Dawah Islami if you look at them behind them there is a person that is comforting them. Behind them, there is a person that is supporting them. Behind them, there's a person that understands that my husband is going today, he's going to be spending time sacrificing the deen. You know, if we look at Nigrani Shura, Nigrani Shura, look from my point of view, Nigrani Shura has been to the UK, I think, seven times now. And each time when he's come, he's come for approximately one month. Approximately one month every single time. Yeah? And the UK is not the only country that he comes to. He's been to many other countries as well. He goes to the Far East, he's gone to South Africa, he's gone to the Middle East, he goes to all these places. If he did not have the support of his family, he did not have the comfort of his family, if he did not have the understanding of his family, you know, his, his life would be so difficult. In the same way, all the other Mubaliks that Alhamdulillah travel in the way of Allah, they have that support, they have that comfort, you know, that they realize that this is for the better. And so, you know, we should support our partners, we should support them in the same way that we're talking about the, the sisters supporting the husbands, but the husband should also support the sisters as well. Because Alhamdulillah within the within the Mahal, within the environment of Dal Islami, the sisters do so much work as well. And so the husbands need to support the sisters as well. And if for example one day the, the food is not ready on time or if for one day you know the house is not as clean as it should be or if for one day there's something that's not been done and as a, and it's a result of the fact that your your spouse, your partner has been out, she's gone to a weekly ishtama, she's been running a course, she's been giving dars, or whatever she's been doing then support her, support her that, alhamdulillah, that, you know, I hope that through you I am forgiven. You know, if only uh, the husband could say to the wife that you're going out, you're going teaching the deen of Islam, I hope that through you I am forgiven. And that when the husband goes out, the wife, the wife says to the husband that, you know, go in the way of Allah, and I hope that through you I am forgiven as well. If we have this mentality of supporting each other, not only in aspects of deen, but everything as well. You know, because we've talked about financial problems, we've talked about giving time for the deen, but also people have other problems as well. People have problems at work, where they're having a rough time, with, with the, the boss is giving them a hard time, you know, and he's, he's on the case all day. You know, and again, if the sisters supported their spouses, then it'd be so much easier for them, instead of giving them a hard time. You know, and, and so many stories that you hear that when, you know, people have had a hard day, and if the husband doesn't understand the wife, and the wife doesn't understand the husband, then it can have a huge detrimental effect. And just one incident I want, that's just come to my mind now. There was an incident where uh, a person, he'd, he'd uh, been at work all, obviously, at day, and he'd had a really horrible day. And the boss had given him a hard time. The boss had been on his case. And as a result of that, he came home and he was really, really tense and angry. And what he did was he uh, came home and he was really, really frustrated. But what had happened at home was that he had a small child. And the small child had probably been teething or something, and all day long, that poor child had been crying. And so the, the, the mother of the child had had a rough day as well, that she'd been trying to comfort the child all day, she'd trying to give the time all day, and it was getting to her end, and she, she couldn't take any more, and she was panicking, and she was getting frustrated, and she couldn't wait for the husband to come over so she could give the child to the husband, and the, she could have a little bit of a break for a few moments. But the husband, on the, on the other hand, when he came home, he just wanted a break because he'd had a rough day as well. And what ensued was an argument. As a result of when he came home and she'd had a bad day, and so because they were both at the end of the patients, an argument ensued. They didn't support each other, they didn't comfort each other. This argument ensued. And astaghfirullah, what happened was, as a result of the husband losing his temper, which again, inshallah, one day we'll talk about controlling our anger as well. The husband picked up the child by the ankles. Very hard for me to narrate this. Very hard for me to narrate this, that the husband picked up the child by the ankles and he beat his wife with the child and the child died and passed away. Why? Because he couldn't control his anger and because both of them did not support each other and did not comfort each other. So viewers of Madhi Channel, again, inshallah, one day we'll talk about controlling our anger as well, but we need to support each other, we need to comfort each other, we need to be there for each other. And if you look at Sayyidina Khadija al-Kubra, she was a perfect example of the support, the love, the understanding that she gave to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whatever difficulties they faced, she was side by side him. She faced the difficulties with him. Whenever there was no food in the house, whenever there was a problem, whenever anything happened, she stood by him and did not make any demands that could not be fulfilled. 
you know, and she stood by him and comforted him. And there's a great message there for all of us that we need to support each other, we need to comfort each other, and we need to control our tempers as well. We have another package for you today as well. It's the health is wealth, inshallah, azawajal. And again, we need to listen to this because we need to maintain our wealth even in these difficult times. So let's watch the package, health is wealth. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, my dear viewers of Madani channel, welcome to the segment Health is Wealth. Today, I want to talk to you about a group of conditions which all can have an impact on our joints. And the condition, the umbrella group, is called spondyloarthropathy. So what it actually causes, that's the key thing. So just to give you an idea, one of the very common conditions, about 2 to 3 percent of the population has it, that is called psoriasis. So it's a skin condition. These are, tend to be silvery, scaly patches which can happen on anywhere in the body, uh, particularly around elbows, knees, um, or sometimes it is hidden psoriasis. So, for example, in our scalp, in the nape of the neck, around belly button or bottom, some, there could be small patch. And in the scalp, psoriasis sometimes is considered, people uh, confuse it with uh, dandruff. But actually, it's a completely different condition. So, if someone has psoriasis, and as I said, 2 to 3 percent of the population may have psoriasis, up to 40 percent of them can also develop arthritis associated with that, and that is called psoriatic arthritis. The reason why I'm explaining that it is important is that if someone does have this condition and then they develop joint pains, they should not uh, be considered it to be just simple joint pain and ignore. If it is happening in the context of psoriasis, I would strongly recommend that you need to see the doctor and it could present in different ways. So sometimes I would see people who may have had tennis elbow. So this is the outer surface of the elbow which becomes painful. Uh, tennis players get it, hence it's the term tennis elbow, but it's actually um, an inflammation of this area which is also associated with this condition. Or another uh, a very common condition is Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon uh, at the back of our heel, the big tendon which we can feel, that Achilles tendon can get inflamed and that can affect people walking. Or there's another condition where people can sometimes get pain in the soles of their feet called plantar fasciitis. All of those, if they're happening with recurrent, in the context of psoriasis, then that also might suggest that these are all related to an underlying arthritic condition or a spondylitic condition. So, if any of my viewers have any of these conditions which is a recurrent, keeps coming back, or intractable so they can't get rid of it, um, and they have a, an, unexplained, an unexplained rash, especially if it is in these hidden areas I mentioned, to the scalp, the nape of the neck, the belly button, or the bottom, it's certainly worth visiting the doctor to show it and make sure that these are not related. Similarly, the type of arthritis which these uh, people, and generally they tend to be gender groups, so uh, people in their 40s and 50s can develop it. So this is the, the type of arthritis where they can have usually asymmetrical involvement at times. So asymmetrical involvement means that sometimes they may have this little joint here in the finger which hurts. Next, uh, the joint might be this, this finger here. And sometimes you may have noticed that the whole toe is swollen, some, which is a term which we use sausage toe. So the entire toe or the entire finger or digit is swollen. And especially when it happens in the toes, when I ask patients, they say, oh, we thought we might have stubbed it. So we thought we might have hit it against uh, uh, a cupboard or something. But actually, this has happened without any injury for the whole toe to be swollen, particularly the middle ones, which is very unlikely for it to be suddenly affected uh, or, or uh, injured. So unexplained entire digit or toe swelling, and uh, where and also these other conditions I mentioned, 
all of those could be part of this spectrum or part of this group of condition which is inflammation related arthritis. So it's one problem in, in the immune system deriving this inflammation manifesting in the skin in the form of psoriasis and then also in the joints in the form of this arthritis in the tendons when it's called tendonitis in the entire toes when it's called dactylitis all of these could be just part of the same thing so certainly worth uh, seeing your doctor and uh, about that and discussing these um, and especially if they're intractable not getting better or, or happening again and again then kindly do consider and uh, have a chat with your doctor. Sometimes this might be associated with uh, uh, red, very red painful eye, a particular condition called juveitis. So again, if someone has had a red painful eye, it's not a simple red eye, but a red painful eye which usually requires hospital treatment. If that has also happened, and there could be number, several years between them, I mean, we know that for psoriasis, for example, there could be 10 or 15 years um, following which someone may develop arthritis. So there could be a long lag between the symptoms, but as long as there is there's a particular history, it's important to join these dots, think of it as a common group of condition, and if that has happened to anyone, I would certainly recommend that they do see their doctor. We are Allah keep us all in the best of health. آمين بجاه النبي الأمين صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. Viewers of Madani Channel, you're watching Arise and Shine, and today. We're talking about the great personality, Sayyiduna Khadija Al-Kubra, radiyallahu ta'ala. And she was a great personality. She was, she was very generous as well. She would spend in the way of Allah, azawajal, and she would give people as well. It is stated that once the foster mother of the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu ta'ala, Sayyiduna Halima Saadiya, radiyallahu ta'ala, she came to the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu ta'ala, and she said that there'd been a drought in her place and there'd been a famine there and they were struggling. And Sayyidina Khadija Al-Kubra, she donated 40 goats and a camel and she gifted them to Sayyidina Halima Saadiya. And this was how generous she would, she would spend in the way of Allah. And again, when you read, when you hear about these stories, when you hear about them, don't just take them as a story. You know, because sometimes what happens is we read a story and we just read it. And so, okay, yeah, she was generous. Okay, yeah, she did this. Okay, yeah, he did this. Okay, he did that. But learn something from this. These people, the way that they live their lives, are examples for us, are lessons for us that we need to learn from. And in this particular case, we see that her generosity, that she spent in the way of Allah Azza wa The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said when it comes to being generous, yeah, Jannat is the home of those who are generous. Allahu Akbar. If Allah Azza wa has blessed you with wealth, then spend it. Spend it on your family, spend it on your relatives, spend in the way of Allah Azza wa the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that a generous person is so close to Allah azza wa jal, so close to paradise, close to people, and he's distant from the hellfire. And a miser is a distant from Allah azza wa jal, distant from uh, paradise, distant from people, and he is close to the hellfire. Allah azza wa jal likes an ignorant, generous person more than a worshipper who is a wiser. Allahu Akbar. In another hadith, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "O oh man." It is better for you if you spend your surplus wealth, but if you withhold it, it is evil for you. There is, however, no reproach for you if you will hold it according to your need and begin charity with your family. And the upper hand is better than the lower hand, meaning spend in the way of your family, spending your charity. Viewers of Malikia, today we've been talking about Sayyiduna Khatija Tul Qabra and I've left, I've left what I, I personally felt was the best hadith regarding her till the end. And I want to just mention this beautiful hadith which sums up, you know, if you learn nothing from the status of this great personality today, listen to this and then you will understand what a great personality she was. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu said, By Allah Azza wa Jal, I have not found a better wife than Khatija. When everyone rejected me, she believed in me. When everyone denied me, she bore witness to me. And when no one was ready to give me anything, Khatija gave to me all her things and Allah Azza wa has granted me children from her. Allahu Akbar. What a great status. 
And in this particular case, the Prophet of Allah is praising her. And you know, if the Prophet of Allah is praising a certain individual, then how fortunate is that individual, alhamdulillah. And this is the great status that she had. And we know, as Muslims, we need to have role models. You know, and unfortunately, we talk about role models today, and who are our role models? And unfortunately, role models are those people that cut their hair in a funny way, or wear clothes in a different way, or, you know, there's astaghfirullah, the brothers that wear earrings, or whoever these role models are, and they play certain sports and they become our role models. And unfortunately, we know more about these people. Our sisters, who are your role models? Do you know about the life of Sayyidina Khadija al-Kubra? Do you know the li about the life of the daughters of the Prophet of Allah Do you know about the lives of the wives of the Prophet of Allah Do you know how they live their lives? To the brothers, do you know about uh, and to sisters, do you know about the sirat of the Prophet of Allah How he lived people, how he dealt with people? And the Prophet of Allah was a perfect example for us. Views of Muslim child, these people that passed before us, the, the companions of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the wives of the Prophet, the pious predecessors that passed before us, all of their lives are filled with examples of how we should live our life. And that knowledge has been passed down to generation to generation of how they lived their life. Why? So that it can become an example for us, so that we can learn from it. Not so that we can just have a bedtime story and say, oh yeah, that's a very good story. No, we need to learn from these. So viewers of Muslim channel, please, Learn about the life of our pious predecessors, be it the blessed mother of the believers, the wives of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, be it the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, or be it the companions as well. Views of Mother Channel, we've now got a department of Dawat Islami that we wish to show you. Alhamdulillah, there are 107 departments, and we try to show you some of the departments of Dawat Islami in a little bit of detail. And inshallah, you know, we cannot cover all of it in such a short amount of time, but today we've got one one department of Dawah Islamic and see for yourself what is that department that we're going to show you today. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Ladies and brothers and viewers of Madani channel, today inshallah wa azza jalmai, viewers of Rise and Shine also, we are going to take an insight into our mighty, alhamdulillah, brilliant department of Dawah Islami. Which department is this? This department is none other than our Madani channel. That's correct, my dear and brothers. The long-awaited, behind the scenes of Madani channel. Let's take a look today. Alhamdulillah, currently we are in the Medina studio. Now we are in Pakistan, Babel, Medina, Karachi. And here, my dear Samar brothers and viewers of Madani channel, we have just within this one place, we have three different studios within this one building. So, my dear Samar brothers, this is an introduction to our department of Dalit Islam Madani channel. Very soon, we shall take a look at other places also. How does Madani channel work? Let's find out and try to understand this today. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Follow me, my dear Samuel brothers and viewers of Madani channel. We love Madani channel. We love Madani channel. We love Madani channel. Malaysian brothers and views of Malaysian channel, subhanAllah, the heat of Pakistan has actually hit me. Allah Akbar within there, due to the running of the cameras, etc. MashaAllah, we had AC, we have fans here. Now, before we do move on, I'm not going to show you that studio, it's just another studio, but that's another studio of ours known as Makkah Studio. And now, inshallah, we shall continue our journey on exploring Madani channel. Channel. Subhanallah, my dear son, brothers, this is the top floor of this particular building where the Madani Channel team is and where the Madani Channel itself runs. We love Madani Channel, we love Madani Channel, we love Madani Channel, we love Madani Channel. Now, inshallah, we are going towards, yes, the same department, Dawat Islami, but in another part, you can say, of Dawat Islami. Let's see what we have next for Madani Channel. That is the reason why we love 
Madani channel. Hello, some brothers and viewers of Madani channel. We have now arrived on that floor, which is entirely dedicated for Madani channel. So if you can take a look, mashallah, there's tens of rooms on this side and also towards that side where we are now going. We are now making our way to the animations and the creative department. Let's go inside and take a look. And it's some brothers and views of Manishal, Alhamdulillah, this is where it all goes on in terms of Ghulami Rasul, especially the kids out there, how is Ghulami Rasul made? It is made right here, mashallah. Also, the other kids. Let's continue, mashallah, and let's take a look around, mashallah. We see various brothers doing many different things. And mashallah, over here, you know, again, you know, we see something a lot more attractive, undoubtedly. But we also see, mashallah, the papers, which makes it seem like, you know, the sketching's done over there. And it's brought here. I don't know if that's how it is exactly. But it seems then they convert it onto the uh, screen. Now, my dear brothers and viewers of Mandarin Channel, the interesting part, the part, you know, we've all been waiting for the favorite of our children, mashallah, children's favorite. His name is Ghulami Rasul. We do pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this character, make our animations of Dawud Sami successful in order to make and bring our children's characters to fruition. Madani channel spreading the blessings of Sunnah. Madani channel spreading the blessings of Sunnah. That is the reason why we love Madani channel. We love Madani channel. We love Madani channel. Now, my dear some brothers and viewers of Mandani Channel, we've come to the particular department of Daud family, which is also known as the creative department. Mashallah, we see, I don't know what this brother is doing here, but here we see, Mashallah, Mufti Qasim himself being, uh, subhanAllah, it seems like he's making possibly posters um, for Abu Madani Channel. And this is where we have various other, you can say, the additives and the extras when you see on Madani channel, for example, showing the dates, etc., and various other things, the slight changes on screen, you can say, all of this is developed within, mashallah, this particular room. Madani channel, do make the children watch Madani channel every day. Do make the children watch Madani channel. Madi some brothers and viewers of Madani channel, you know, all you see is you know what's shown on screen, but there is so much more, mashallah, happening behind the screens. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all these brothers for the work they are doing. Let's now go to the next uh, short department, you can say, of our huge Dawud Islamis Madani channel. We love 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 Madani Channel. Madani Channel. Salu ala al Habib, Salahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, Salahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And these are brothers and viewers of Madani Channel. This particular room, mashallah, you see many brothers here on their computers over there, mashallah. We have uh, Amir Bai busy away with his own work. This, my dear Samuel brothers, this particular uh, room, this department, deals with the editing of the videos. We love Madani Channel. We love Madani Channel. We love Madani Channel. So, my dear Samuel brothers and viewers of Madani Channel, once the recording has been done, then that video is sent to these brothers in this room. And here we have the Mufattish, meaning that individual who has a, who checks over the entire video, he looks through the entire video and he analyzes the video, 
sees if there are any mistakes mentioned by the Mubalik and if there were any mistakes he would remove those or edit those or do whatever he deemed uh, necessary. So this is that particular department which deals with on the one hand the taftish as we call it, the review, the recheck of the video and similarly they edit any particular videos for any editing that is required. So mashallah this is another um, you can say slight department of the huge department of Dawat Islam. The knowledge of Islam from now so that they learn The knowledge of Islam from now We love Madani Channel 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 Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam alihi sallam brothers and viewers of Madan channel right now we are in what's known as the PCR PCR stands for the production control room here my dear sallam brothers is where all the controls take place as you could see all these accessories to give you a good understanding of what this actually is is for example we have what's on air up there if you can see the Madani channel screen but below, below the Madini channel screen, there is another huge screen with many different cameras. So all of the cameramen are taking those particular shots. From here, from this machine, if you would want it to, for example, show me on the camera, then he could, for example, press this button. If he was thinking, no, now another person is speaking, let's show that one on screen, then he'll change that. So that's what this is right here. And this, the director himself deals with. Within this PCR, we have a director, we have the sound engineer, mashallah, who deals with the sounds, and we also have the OB engineer. Let's now go to the MCR, the master control room. What is that? We shall soon find out. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Follow me. The children watch Madani Channel every day. Do make the children watch Madani Channel every day so that they learn the knowledge of Islam from now. So that they learn the knowledge of Islam from now. We love Madani Channel. We love. Madani Channel, we love Madani Channel. My dear son, brothers and viewers of Madani Channel, now we've come to the final part of our segment. What is this, my dear son, brothers and viewers of Madani Channel? The MCR. This is the master control room. Let's go inside and see what is in there. Madani Channel, Madani Channel spreading. The blessings of brothers and viewers of Mother Channel, after having viewed the PCR, the production control room, now we've come to the MCR, the master control room. The reason why we love Madani Channel, we love Madani, we love Madani Channel, we love Madani Channel, we love Madani Channel. Madani Channel Whoever loves Madani Channel Whoever loves Madani Channel Inshallah works. This has been split into three rooms Over there, mashallah, we have the uh, MCR for the Bangladeshi um, brothers on the Bangladeshi channel Over there we have it for the Urdu uh, Madani channel and here for the English Madani channel. Now what happens here as you've seen from the PCR the production control room when you know the switch cameras etc which one should come up from there within you know a few milliseconds you can say it reaches this room the MCR and this is you can say the finalizer because it is from here that it is sent to the dish and then sent and transmitted 
um, throughout the world for all the viewers of Madani channel to see if you were to look over here you see so mashallah on the screens um, this is basically what's coming on your screen at home so mashallah all of this is from the MCR and it is from here my dear brothers and viewers of Madani channel that we have the finalizer as you can see over there when we're given the countdown five four three two one go and that's when we begin and these lot they channel it from here. So my dear brothers and viewers of Madin channel, a insight of our Dawit Islam is Madini channel, your Madini channel. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Channel spreading the blessings of Sunnah by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Viewers of Madhuri Channel, time is very, very short. And I want to give you a couple of incidences of the benefits of Madhuri Channel. One, alhamdulillah, during the Rise and Shine program, mashallah, Shabazz Madhuri was the host that day. And I was fortunate, I was a guest with Shabazz Madhuri on that day. And we had a person that had a rang in, uh, sent him a message from Africa. And as a result of watching Madhuri Channel afterwards, Shabazz Madhuri spoke to him. Personally, Alhamdulillah, he accepted Islam. But to just to very, very quickly, uh, time is against me. I want to give you another uh, beautiful parable with regards to the benefits of Madhuri Channel. Uh, in the UK here, that what happens is sometimes that when you are released from jail, they put a tag on you. They put a, like a brace around your ankle. And basically, that is like a, a device that monitors where you are going. And a certain brother, he was released from jail, but the condition of his release was that he had to stay in his home. He couldn't leave his home for three months. So he's at home because he's got this, this tag on him and he cannot leave the home. And his mother, Alhamdulillah, used to watch Madhuri channel. And obviously he didn't. Whenever he got the opportunity to switch, get the remote, he would switch it off and put something else on. But because his mother was watching Madhuri channel, he had no choice. He's sitting at home. He's got nothing else to do. So he's watching Madhuri channel. And slowly, slowly, he had this effect. He's watching this Madhuri channel. And it's an having effect on him. And one day he picked up the phone and he phoned up one of his old friends. And he said to one of his friends, he said, do you know about these Madhuri boys? Do you know about them? Yeah, because obviously he didn't know the Islam, he just some Madani channel. So he said, do you know anything about the Madani boys? And the brother said, yeah, they have a, an ishtama in a certain, certain place, yeah? So he said, okay, can you go to the ishtama, find out when they have these ishtamas, and find out if they have a maktabat al -Madina. And his friend said to him, what's the maktabat al -Madina? Because obviously the, the environment that he come from, he didn't understand. And he said, apparently it's, they have a stall. So this brother, he went to the ishtama, saw that they had a stall, came back and phoned him and said, yeah, they have a stall here. He said, okay, next time, please go for me. Buy from me a white salwar kameez from there. Buy from me a topi from there. Buy from me an imam ashri from there. Buy me a chadar from there. This brother that left jail went into his home wearing a tag to make sure that he could not leave his home. Three months later when he le came out of his home and you saw him, viewers of Mother Jail, all I can say is when you saw him, by that time he'd grown the blessed beard, he'd had the zulfa, he had the imam ashri, he had that everything. It looked like he'd been in the mahal for 10 years, alhamdulillah. So this was all through the blessings of watching Madhuri Channel. We have many, many blessings that we can talk about, but time is against us. So viewers of Madhuri Channel, keep watching Madhuri Channel, and not only keep watching Madhuri Channel, get other people to watch Madhuri Channel as well. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end. And the sun will rise and shine Even the darkest night will end And the sun will rise and shine And the sun will rise and shine